Now, before we get to this budget business, here again, ladies and gentlemen, another glittering example of one of the greatest gaps, the greatest divides that I think exist in the country. Do you remember, let's put it this way, the Democrat National Committee is fundraising off of a joke that I told earlier this week. It might have been late last week. But do you remember, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the story when I told you, I'm sure many of you didn't believe it. You thought, come on, Rush, this is a bunch of French cooks. This is going to happen. A bunch of liberals who wanted to outlaw men gazing at women because the gaze was said to objectify women. And there is a bunch of liberal pansies who had done some market research or some such thing and said that it was sexism and uh, uh, other negative things for men to do what God created us to do, and that's look at women we think are attractive. Sorry, liberals, it can't be helped among the heterosexual crowd. It just can't be helped. It's instinct. It's in there. It's programmed. It's in the DNA so that there will be babies. So that the human race will propagate. It's called life, making sure that it survives. Now, this is only relevant in the heterosexual. In the homosexual community, you're looking at same-sex people the same way, but you can't help it either. It's absolutely absurd. It was silly. It's hilarious that there are actually a bunch of liberals who are going to try to outlaw thoughts that are part of our creation. To make it an unnatural act for men to gaze at women they find attractive. They want to criminalize that. They want to say that's sexism. It's objective. Well, it's patently absurd. And so... In the course of discussing this and illustrating the absurdity of this by being absurd, I came up with a classic, I think, line. Because if the left, there there are going to be some women who will go for this. There are going to be some women. (laughs) I could compound the controversy right now with my next sentence, but... (laughs) There are going to be some women uh, that, that that are going to sign on for this because they think is they're going to they're going to believe that it it's sex. It's going to be liberal women, and, and they're going to think it's yeah, this is a good thing. They don't like being stared at by men; it makes them nervous. So let's make it a crime or make it some kind of a taboo or something. But those women be a minority. Trust me. Trust me. The fact is, most men would love to be stared at by women. I, I just don't doubt me on this. And my guess is that most women actually are intrigued by it and have developed techniques and skills for dealing with it. They're born with those, too. Don't doubt me. This all works out. Now, the line that I uttered... (laughs) I advise you men that if you you were objectifyingly gazing at a woman you found attractive and she didn't like it and somehow let you know, That what you should do is say, I'm sorry, would you please ask your breasts to stop staring at my eyes? That's a great line. I mean, it's a joke to boot, but it is an illustration of the absurdity of what the libs are trying to pull off here. The thought police. Does that, did that offend you? Let me ask you, when I, when I, did that, did that? Okay. Uh, then did it have to be altered? Then, uh, 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 ma'am, would you please ask your butt to stop staring in my eyes? What, whatever it is. Breasts just it, it, looking at the full frontal here. I wasn't. So anyway, the DNC is now fundraising off of this, claiming that this is a new chapter in the war on women. Yep, this evidence evidence of the war on women conducted by the Republicans, they cite me and the Daily Caller 
in doing a story on this, also had some uh, humorous line that the DNC is trying to fundraise off of. Yeah. And the Politico is running the story as though it's deadly serious, and the DNC is demanding that the Republicans boycott me by not sending guests to this program. Now, that's going to be a big boycott because it's already in place, and it's one that I have established. I don't, I'm the one that doesn't do guests. Now, here's the... Here's the well, no. They're, they're, here's the thing. They are going to get money off of this. Do you understand? This is the whole point of this story. There are people on the left, these wacko nutcase uh, oddballs. They're going to this. This is all over the leftist blogosphere as genuine sexism. I've done it again. They think they can get me now. This is it. I have stepped in it again, and they can finally get me. They are dead. They think this is one of the most offensive things that's ever been said in public. And they want advertisers to know it. And they want everybody to know it. And they want everybody at RNC to, 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 to boycott me. And they think this is an absolutely horrible. And, of course, they are not explaining the context. They are just telling people that I, out of nowhere, came up with the line that is not related to one of their cockamamie thought control ideas. That's impossible. Anyway, you, nobody's going to ever be able to get men to stop staring at women. They think they're attractive or even looking at them. The hell with staring. It's never going to happen. You can't do it. It's not possible. But the left has little wacko people that want to actually make this a, a penalty. They want to penalize this or criminalize it to, to one extent or another. Here is the... Uh, No, Snurgley, it's the mainstream of the American left that is offended by this. This is my point. People have got to understand who these people really are. Here's the Politico story by uh, the well-known journalist Dylan Byers. Seeking to reignite the war on women narrative, Democrat National Committee sent an email to supporters asking them to push Republicans to stop talking to Rush Limbaugh on the Daily Caller because of recent remarks the conservatives made about sexual harassment. They, this is the point. They want to try to make men noticing women that are attracted to them sexual harassment. This is the chick, chickification of the culture. What are the, Actually, this isn't the chickification. This is what the feminazis... Remember, undeniable truth of life, number 24. That's what this is all about. This is the unattractive women who are never stared at, ticked off. Well, take it back. They probably are stared at, but... (sighs) Yeah, yeah, not, not, not lustily, longingly or any of that. Anyway... Seeking to uh, reignite the war on women narrative, Democrat National Committee sent an email to supporters asking them to push Republicans to stop talking to Rush Limbaugh, the Daily Caller, because of recent remarks the conservatives made about sexual harassment. Lily Adams, the DNC's deputy communications director, wrote, There's a line, there's a line between casual but unacceptable sexism and justifying sexual harassment. When someone as prominent as Rush Limbaugh crosses that line, everyone, Democrats and Republicans alike, need to stop the precedent from becoming a habit. Statements in question, Limbaugh's remark that men shouldn't be criticized for staring at women's breasts, but should instead tell women, will you please ask your breasts to stop staring at my eyes? I must. I read this. <laughs> I, I read my own line, and I'm laughing myself silly at. Now they leave the context out. They forget to tell people that what my line is in reaction to is a bunch of Stalinism, thought control penalties that they are behind. The uh, let's see. This is, what can you imagine if they're going to do that to me? What do they What do they have in store for Bill Clinton? I mean, there's there's real sexual harassment there. I'm a, I mean, it's absurd. Now, with Clinton, of course, they applauded it. They looked at the other way, and they they didn't mind it. Carville and everybody else out there calling 
women that Clinton lusted after trailer park trash. That's what you get, you know, you drag a dollar bill to a trailer park. That's what Carville said about Clinton's babes. The Daily Caller line that offended the Democrat National Committee. Ladies, how are you going to feel when the progressives prohibit men from paying you a compliment on your walk home from the bar? You know, there's always one friend of yours who waited all night for that. <laughs> so, that ticked off. <laughs> That's the Daily Caller line that the DNC's mad at and trying to fundraise off of. In the in the email, Lily Adams... Now, by the way, I want to point out, this is something, again... Over the last 25 years, this stuff would happen. I would laugh myself silly, and I would think nobody is going to take this seriously, and I'm wrong. Half of the Democrat Party is going to take this seriously, and half of them are going to be outraged, and it's going to be a discussion item on cable TV before this is all said and done. And it's they're going to play it up. War on women is back. They're going to put me out there. They're going to try to fundraise off of this, and who knows whatever else. Imagine people like that, but they are there. And they have nothing but sympathy in the drive-by media. I mean, if the drive-by media can name the Pope the man of the year despite disagreeing with 99% of what he believes in, you think he'll have any problems siding with the Democrat National Committee on this against me and the uh, the Daily Caller? In the, uh, in the email, uh, Lily Adams, the DNC Deputy Comm Director, asks supporters to call on the RNC to encourage their fellow Republican leaders to stop making time for interviews with outlets like these, meaning me and the, uh, and the Daily Caller. The Daily Caller, similarly accused, also has a story, and, and they're they making the point they refuse to be intimidated by any of this. And, of course, this is all supposedly in the name of tolerance and diversity. And I tell you, these people have no sense of humor. They have none, folks. They cannot laugh, and particularly at, uh, at themselves. So, okay, so there's that. I just wanted to alert you to it, and I wanted to use the line again, which is the primary reason I did the story. I think it's a great line. 